Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to see the next program on timers. So in first video, we have seen and random square pulse is being generated with unknown frequency. In next program, we have seen how to create and specific delay. It is random. First video is random. And next, a fixed delay is being created. And you have said uh, how to create this delay. So now it is a next in instance of program where we will try to understand that if we want to create a square wave with fixed frequency, how we can do that one. So we can directly enter inside our program. So the question given to us is going to be write an 8051 assembly language program using timers to generate a frequency of 2 kilohertz on port 1.0, which means port 1, 0 pin. Assume the crystal clock frequency is going to be 11.0592. So specification given is use timer 1 and mode 1. So if it is going to be timer 1, so whatever registers we are going to use, it is going to be TH1. And after that, it is going to be TL1. And if you want to enable it, it is going to be TR1. If you want to check the overflow, it will be TF1. Mode 1. It is going to be normal 16-bit uh, timer by counter mode. So the calculations is going to be for F, 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 F. So we have to find out what is the maximum value here, right? So they have specified it is 2 kilohertz, right? So it has been given with a frequency. So this frequency, whatever we are going to get should be with 2 kilohertz. Right? That is what the question which is given to us. So we want to identify the maximum uh, value of your uh, TH1 and TL1 so that it is going to create this 2 kilohertz frequency square wave. Right? So what are the things which is given to us? It is going to be port 1, 0 pin, timer 1, mode 1 and after that frequency is given as 2 kilohertz. That is what the conditions given to us. So we can directly get inside the calculations. So the crystal cross frequency is going to be 11.0592 done. So with that we have already calculated 1.085 microseconds is going to be the time instance of your clock frequency. So we have asked to create a 2 kilohertz pulse, right? So if you want to calculate in terms of time period, it is going to be inverse of your frequency. So create, uh, try to find the inverse of this one. So 1 divided by 2 kilohertz. So it is going to get 500 microseconds. So how we can able to create it? So if you want to take it from here to here, the total duration which you want to have should be of 500 microseconds. That is what we have calculated. So that overall pulse will be having 2 kilohertz frequency. So if you want to take in terms of your uh, square wave, so in a previous program, we have understood how to create an delay, right? So this is the delay which we have created. So this delay, how we can able to create if it is a square wave. So this should be is with 250 microseconds on duration and off duration should also be 250 microseconds, right? So if you want to create a delay, the delay should be 250 microseconds overall pulse square pulse it should be having 500 microseconds individual with divided by 250 percent duty cycle for square wave so it should be of 250 microseconds so this is our uh, calculated values and after that to get it we divide it with the time duration already created by your clock pulse or in terms of your timer pulse so 250 microseconds divided by uh, 1.085 microseconds it is going to be 230 clocks so this 230 clocks has to be subtracted from your FEF, FEF count, right? So how this is getting, we have already explained all these things in previous videos. Just check with that one. So 2 to the power 16 is going to be FEF, FEF. So if in terms of decimal, it should be 65, 536, right? So this 65, 536 has to be subtracted with the value of 230. So you will be getting the value of FEF. 1a in hexadecimal or if in terms of decimal direct calculation it is going to be 65036 that is what we will get if you are going to convert it into hexadecimal it is going to be ff1a so my first question is being solved here 
So what is the value we have to upload it in terms of TH and TL is done. So TH higher nibbles, it is going to be TH1 here. And this is going to be lower nibbles, it is going to be 1A here. Right? So 1A it is going to be TL1. Right? So I got those values TH1 and TL1. So with this, we can able to directly jump into the programming. So same as like we have done for previous programs, we are going to do it here. So we have to create a program. So from that you are going to start it from 00H. So they have given a question, right? It has to be timer 1. So till now we have used timer 0. So if it is going to be timer 0, it is going to be T mod, which should be having the value of 01H till now. because. It is going to be in terms of your calculations. We can directly get the T mod register. First one should be gate. Next one should be C bar T. And next one should be M naught M1. And after that gate, C bar T, M1, M naught. Right? This is what the 8 bits of your T mod register. This is for your timer 1 and this is for your timer 0. So if you want to calculate it for timer 1, so timer one has to be enabled with 16 bit. So bit calculations, you can able to do it on your own. You can able to go for uh, mode zero, but in question it has been clearly asked, it should be mode one. So in this case, uh, if you want to make your enable your timer one, so gate should be zero. We are not going to give any extra pulse from outside. So it should be timer. So it should be zero. So M1 and M0, it should be zero one. So that it is going to be operated in mode one. Right, all other things should be 0, 0, 0, 0. Right, we have already seen those calculations in previous video itself. So, it should be having 1, 0, H. That is what I have loaded here 1, 0, H. So, after that one, if you want to move inside, getting inside the values of TL1 and TH1, we have already calculated TL1 is going to be 1A, TH1 is going to be FF. So, the count has to start from FF, 1A and it has to gain its increment its value and it will reach FEF, FEF. So this is what uh, the program has been specified. So starting values would be FEF 1A. So when the counter, uh, the timer should start its counting. So I have to set my TR1 in my TCON register, right? So in order to uh, get the values of TR1, so I can directly give it as set byte TR1 so that the TR1 of your TCON register will be enabled to 1. So whenever it is seeing this one, the count will start. So the count is going to start from here and it is going to keep on increase its count. So in next sentence, what I am trying to uh, get it. So jump no byte, which means if your TF1 is 1, only at that time, it is going to jump out of the loop. Whenever it is going to identify it as zero, it is going to jump again and again inside the loop itself. So when this will happen, when this TF1 will become one, so it is an overflow. So whenever it is completing its count of FF, FF, so it is going to enable your TF1. Right, it is set to one. So till the count is getting completed, your possibility is saying as FFFF, which means TF1 is going to be 1. So it is going to be jumping out of this loop. So whenever it is going to jump out of this loop, I am going to clear my TR1. It should not be on. So my timer should be off. And after that one, I am going to complement my uh, pin of 1.0. So previously, whenever you are going to switching on your uh, 8051, always your port values will be 1. So port 1.0 is going to be 1. So all the values will be 1 default. So you can able to check with architecture and uh, theoretical aspects. So every port and every pin will be fixed to 1. So after finding its delay, so after uh, getting the value of your uh, 1, so initially it is going to have its value. So it is going to count from FEF 1A and it is going to stop at FEF FEF. So after that one, it is going to complement. So it is becoming zero at this point. All the time it is going to be one right initially. So after that one, I'm going to clear my TF1 because it is already set to one because overflow has been continued. 
So after that, I'm going to clear it so that my TF1 is going to be zero. So after that one, yes, jump back. So I'm going to jumping back here. So again, my TL1 is going to be 0, uh, 1A and TFH1 is going to be FFH. All those things is going to happen. So what is the thing? So this is going to derive me with 20. So I think it should be 250 milliseconds, right? Yeah, it's 250 milliseconds. So I got my 250 milliseconds here. So after complementing, so it is going to continue for another 250 milliseconds, right? 250 milliseconds. So after that, it is going to be complemented again. So again, it is going to increase its pulse 250 milliseconds. Like this, it is going to continue its operation never endingly. Right? So it can able to create a square waveform of 500 milliseconds each in terms of its entire cycle calculation. But we have to create a delay for 250. Uh, it will be in terms of, sorry, it is microseconds, right? Sorry. It is microseconds. It is microseconds. So I have to get this value. So I can able to put this program in KL C51 and I can able to check whether I am getting this output or not. So I can directly move inside programming. So the same program I have given here. So I can able to uncomment this one. So I can come on the previous programs, all other programs. Okay. So port 1.0 has to be enabled. So Tmod, all the values as same as in the slide I have given. So I can able to translate, build, rebuild. And after that, one, I have to check my crystal oscillator frequency. So it is 11.0592. It's fixed. So there is no problem here. If it is not having this value, please change this value to 11.0592. After that, press OK. Deep mode. OK. So now, if this window is not enabled for you, please click on this lo logic analyzer. So this, if you are going to click on this logic analyzer, this logic analyzer will come. So we can able to see with your uh, port values also. So I can take the peripherals. In that, I can able to take input output ports. So port 1 should be enabled, right? So see here. Before starting the program, every value is 1. I have already seen, right? So whenever you are going to start the program, every port and every pin will be getting the value of 1. So if I am going to start the program, yeah. so see here, it is going to uh, change its value. So it is going to be port 1, pin 0, right? See here, it is fluctuating, which means I am going to keep on changing these values, right? That is what I want. So it is creating a square pulse. So I can stop the square pulse and I can see. So while calculating, you just click on this cursor. You can click it so that I can able to get this cursor. So I can able to place it here and I can move to the next point so that it is going to give the value of. So it is 250 microseconds. It should be. So since the calculations are in decimal, we are getting some rough value of 260. So total duration, it should be 500 milliseconds. So if it is 500 milliseconds, around 524 milliseconds we are getting. It. So since the calculation should be of whole numbers, we are making this one. So roughly we can able to get the value of 500 milliseconds. Like this, I can able to calculate for individual uh, frequency of my square wave. And after that, we can able to do it for all frequencies. I can able to operate in all modes. So if I want to change the modes, I have to change my T mod uh, values. And after that one, if I want to change the frequency, I can able to change my TL1 and TH1. So you can able to give a try for rectangular pulse and you can able to put it in the comment box or chat section so that I can able to correct those things whether you can able to do that thing or not. For that, it should not be with 50% duty cycle. It should be with 70% duty cycle or uh, it will be with 30% duty cycle so that the on duration is going to be less and the off duration is going to be high. So the width of the duration is going to be different so that we can able to have some different pulses. So the duty cycle is going to be different. Correspondingly, you can able to try to write a program and put it in the comment section so that I can able to verify. Thank you for your patient listening.